Preseason game number one, the Broncos looked like they had this one in the books, but a last second touchdown from Arizona doomed them in the desert. The Broncos postgame show starts right now. Hello, welcome into the studio. I am Phil Lonnie. Thank you for joining us for the Broncos postgame show. Happy to be joined by the Hall of Famer, Steve yes, Adwater, sir. and our Hall of Famer, Nick Ferguson. Mr. Nick Ferguson. Guys, uh, <laughs> it looked like the Broncos were playing well. The first teamers did all right out there. Uh, 18 to 17, the final. They lose this one. But uh, Steve, let's start with you. Your thoughts on the game. Well, uh, I thought it was a well-played game. Uh, and... Uh, apparently, the second and third team units, they weren't able to keep it going. Uh, but to put 10 points on the board early and uh, then the, the last touchdown at the end, I thought that was clutch. But just wasn't enough there in the end. But I thought overall it was a very good performance. Yeah, for the first time seeing action with this offense under Sean Payton, I thought it looked similar to practice. Kind of slow at the very beginning, picked up later uh, towards the third and second quarter. And it was great to see Russell Wilson go out there and actually show fans that while he may not be the Russell of old, he's not a Russell that still needs to be fixed. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, it's a preseason. We want to see what the first team guys do. We want the team to come out healthy. We'll have more on that uh, a little bit later on. But let's get to the highlights here. Broncos head coach Sean Payton making his Denver debut. No PS2 or Justin Simmons in this one, but no problem for the secondary. Isain Bassey with an early interception in this one. Like Nick mentioned, the offense uh, had a slow start, but found some steam in the second quarter. Cortland Sutton, a 19-yard catch here, and then a few plays later, Jerry Judy on fourth down, makes up for an earlier drop, 21-yard touchdown, and the Broncos are on the board. This was a tied game in the fourth, and camp star Jaleel McLaughlin finishes off the drive here. It looked like the Broncos had this one, but Arizona driving, Brian Cobbs finds the end zone with just two seconds to go. The Cardinals go for two and they get it. They go on top, 18 to 17, the final. Let's go out to State Farm Stadium and check in with Eric Dalala and Sydney Jones. Thanks, Phil. It was a slow start, Eric, for this. Broncos starting offense, but they finished their outing with a nice touchdown drive. Russell Wilson found Jerry Judy for that 21-yard touchdown. Eric, what were your main takeaways from the first team performance tonight? Yeah, a little bit of a slow start, a three and out, right? And then a couple of missed opportunities. You did like to see Russell Wilson work the ball down the field a little bit. Some double-digit yardage completions. Missed a couple of field goals. Otherwise, it probably looks better from a scoring perspective. But, you know, Sean Payton said they're going to play about 15 to 18 plays. They played 20. And on that 20th play, they score the touchdown, fourth and four. I like the aggressive play there. You saw the best of Jerry Judy. And look, Russell moved around a little bit, took some hits, uh, which you don't like to see. Offensive line needs to be a little bit better. But I thought overall, a step in the right direction. Well, looking at the defense, Eric, the starting defense was without Justin Simmons, Pat Sertan, and Frank Clark. They were on the field for about two drives. But looking at some of the younger guys, the you know, second and third strings, it was really great to see those guys get some game action. Jaquan McMillan. You know, Elijah Garcia, Justin Sternod, they had some good games out here. Yeah, I mean, the first team defense obviously kept the Cardinals off the board. That was nice to see. Uh, just one drive for Colt McCoy. But you saw those younger guys step up, which was good. And, uh, you know, you wish they'd be able to keep the Cardinals out of the end zone there at the very end. An unfortunate ending to the game. But, yeah, you, you saw McMillan step up. You saw uh, some of these other guys make plays. And that's what they need to do to make this, play, this team. It's making plays out there, but also not making mistakes. You saw them fly around a bit. And, uh, you know, the first team defense got off the field. Uh, not perfect there in the early going, but I think you saw enough from them to, uh, to be pleased. Well, the Broncos were one of four on field goal attempts, Eric. You know, looking at this kicker competition, that only field goal made tonight was by Elliott Fry, and it was a 55-yarder. Yeah, nice to see him knock in that extra point there at the end to add some consistency. Obviously, Brett Maher, we saw him miss one wide right. We saw another one blocked. Not sure if that's his fault or not. You know, Luke Wattenberg got pushed back pretty quickly there. So we'll have to wait and hear from, uh, you know, special teams coordinator Ben Kotwick next time we next time we talk to him. But, yeah, you want to see these guys make kicks, and it's got to be a little bit more consistent. If you're the Broncos, you look back and say, hey, we could have been up 13-0 there, you know, after Russell punches in that final touchdown. It's got to be better in the regular season. You know, you've heard Sean Payton say it's not just between these two guys, right? He said it's about all the kickers out there who are available. So uh, 
you got to make kicks. Yeah, well, the Broncos will return home next week for some more training camp practices. But overall, great game tonight. Good progress for this team. Phil, we'll send it back to you. Thank you very much, guys. I'm back here in studio with the Hall of Famer Steve Atwater and Nick Ferguson. Guys, uh, all eyes were on Russell Wilson. Hey, how is he going to look uh, after going through the uh, first couple of weeks of training camp here? What would you see from number three? Yeah, well, I'll tell you what. I, I think any quarterback uh, – when they start with a new offense, this is going to be a little bit of an adjust, adjustment period. Now, they've been working with Sean for quite a while now, so many people would think, hey, he should have everything down pat. Well, it doesn't work that easily, especially when you're in a game when it's live, it's full speed, tackling the whole nine yards. Uh, but I thought overall uh, he had a good grasp of the offense. Uh, Fortunately, there were a couple of batted passes. Um, but I thought he was fairly accurate with the passes that he did throw. And it looked like, they had, again, he had a good grasp of the offense and they were running everything smoothly, getting the plays off on time, all the things that you need to have a successful offense. Yeah, I would agree with Steve. I mean, once again, things started out really slow for the team. And Russell going out with a new offense, it's not going to be perfect. Sean Payton would tell you himself, it is a process. Right, and you have to go through that process, and this was kind of the first leg of trying to get through that process, watching them go out with that three and out, try to start to struggle a little bit, then try to get the offense back on track. Then it was kind of, once again, like it was at practice. Once again, another slow start. But when he started to find his rhythm, he found Jerry Judy, he found Corlin Sutton, Samarji P. Ryan got involved. This is what we expect from this offense, but we just need more of it. Four drives uh, for Russell Wilson, 20 plays. So right about sort of what we thought. Uh, uh, is that what you were expecting? You knew that Sean wasn't going to take him out of the game until they found something. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I just I, I had that feeling. And uh, I was at another uh, restaurant getting something to eat before I came over here. And some of the guys were talking. I was like, Russ is not coming out until we put some points on the board. Yeah. And uh, fortunately, they got it done. And you saw how hyped Russ was when, he, when, when we got that, got that touchdown, that great pass to Jerry Judy. And Jerry Judy, again, nobody can cover him one-on-one, -on -one, uh, especially in a situation where they're trying to blitz. So uh, did a great job of getting that ball to him. And Jerry Judy did a great job of looking it in this time. The previous play, I think he had, uh, you know, let, let that, there, yeah, yeah. He bobbed it a little bit, didn't have it secure there. Well, let's just be totally honest about the situation. Based on what we saw from Russ last season, there was a lot of local and national narratives about who Russell was. And the only individual who was supporting him is his head coach. So you're, you're absolutely right. He wanted to make sure that he finished this game with a positive note because think about it. It's confidence you want at the quarterback position. And sometimes when a guy's skill set may be diminishing, I'm not suggesting that this is quite the case with Russell, but I'm just saying every single player – more importantly, the quarterback needs to have that certainty and that confidence. I think Russ got a little of that today. Yeah, most definitely. I think you leave this game feeling a little bit more confident about this Broncos offense, the starting unit, and Russell Wilson. Uh, here's what the Broncos quarterback had to say after the game. We really wanted to have, you know, get some drives in there. I thought, you know, we knew, knew we were going to try to get 15, 18 plus plays um, somewhere in there. And um, I thought that was a really good how we responded. Um, you know, after the first drive, we really responded. The ball started moving. Third drive, and then fourth drive. Obviously, we finished it off. I thought that was a really great route by Jerry. Um, you know, you know, good job by him, just getting open there on a split second. Um, they brought all, all pressure, and he just did a great job of uh, winning and getting a touchdown there for us. And that was big. So that was Russell Wilson after the game, uh, guys. Let's talk about the feel of the Broncos sideline. There, uh, we saw Sean Payton for the first time wearing that orange visor, patrolling the sidelines. Things feel a little bit different to you? Oh uh, yeah, they feel different. They feel great. And I know the New Orleans Saints fans. They got to be sick to their stomach knowing that uh, you know the coach, the great coach that they had for many years, is now uh, with a different team. But we are certainly happy to have them here. Uh, the leadership shows. Uh, it just looked like a totally different team. And the guys look like, hey, everybody's into the game. The, for the full game, uh, looked like everybody on the sidelines, uh, they were paying attention to the game. They weren't doing uh, other things. No uh, Gilligan uh, yeah, hats, okay? yeah, yeah, no yeah. Gilligan yeah. Hats. We didn't see any of that out there, all right? Yeah, no bucket hats, no shades. It was all business. And that's something that we haven't seen around here in a long time. And for me, it was always about – accountability. How are these guys going to adjust to accountability that Sean Payton was bringing in here? And you, de you definitely saw, like Steve said, guys were attentive. You saw guys on the sideline, even PS2, there was a shot of him inside that red zone trying to coach guys, yeah. and that's something that we haven't seen around here in a while. So 
it, the, the, this preseason is off, not to the start that you wanted to from a stat and score standpoint, but you got to be happy for or what you're seeing right now because this team is starting to galvanize. Hey, right off the bat, it was different because we saw the starters play. We saw them, yeah. you know, go into the second quarter a little bit. Here's what uh, Broncos head coach Sean Payton had to say at the podium. You know, regardless of whether it's a preseason game, regular season game, you know, you, you just can't stand losing in uh, – especially in that fashion. We'll look at the tape tomorrow. There'll be a number of things that we'll be excited about. There'll be a number of things we got to clean up. Um, and so, you know, we're, we're in a race to do that now that we have, you know, an opponent on film against us. So we start from there. That was Broncos head coach Sean Payton after the game. Uh, we're back here in studio. Let's talk about Jaleel McLaughlin. A lot of buzz coming out of uh, Broncos camp. You know, hey, who is this guy? Who is this guy? Fans who haven't been out here – Got, got to see him a little bit tonight. Yeah, and he's a guy who's very explosive. He's a smaller uh, running back uh, in stature and is, is in weight. I think he's under 200 pounds. Uh, but the speed just jumps off of the charts. And uh, he looks so exciting, especially uh, when – they aren't tackling him in practice. You know, they'll let him run through the line. And, you know, the, the, the fans start cheering, thinking it's a touchdown, where many times it wouldn't necessarily been that. But to see him uh, get in there uh, on the NFL level in his first game and to see him continue to do that same thing, continue to go through that whole full speed, that was very impressive. And, uh, man, I think he has a, a great shot. I know it's still early, but I think he has a great shot, shot of making his ball club. I know everyone was uh, waiting for week one of preseason to see what this offensive line and Russell look like. But I, I would dare to say that everyone was looking to see what Taylor Grimes and Jaleel McLaughlin were going to look like because in practice, I mean, those guys look brilliant. But we know you don't make the team as a practice champion. So it all, it's all about stacking those bricks and stacking the deck when you get inside the game. And both of those players did that. I mean, Danucci did a great job of finding Taylor Grimes, and, you know, that may be a guy who is uh, poised to make this team but make it on the practice squad. But this is where we want to see. We want to see these guys go out and play well in preseason, and those two guys did. You mentioned Ben Danucci right there. Uh, before that final drive, we were talking, hey, this is a big drive for him. He went down and led the touchdown. He did, and he, he, was, he was poised. Uh, I think he was, what, uh, seven, seven of nine for 57 yards. Uh, I thought he did a great job of staying composed, uh, keeping the offense uh, running smoothly, and just keeping his keeping his keeping his calm, uh, uh, and also uh, making sure he got the ball to the right person. Uh, he did a great job of leading the team down the field, clutch situation, and putting points on the board. The the great thing about watching these two backup quarterbacks uh, compete, Jared Stidham and Ben DiNucci, is trying to decipher who deserves more reps. In the, next, in the coming weeks. And it comes down to, what do you do in that moment? I mean, Ben DiNucci, you know, ran the two-minute offense effectively, 10 plays, 87 yards. And I'm sure Sean Payton is like, hey, listen, this is what I want. If Russ can't play, this is one of what I want to make sure that we have. And Ben DiNucci went back to his Cowboys days, his Seattle uh, Sea Dragon days, and showed his mobility, being able to escape the pocket and still deliver pass. That's the guy you want to be your backup quarterback. It could be a situation where the Broncos keep three quarterbacks. We're going to have to see uh, here as things progress throughout the preseason. Uh, let's go inside the Broncos locker room out there in Glendale and check in with Sidney Jones. Thanks, Phil. We're here inside the locker room with running back Jaleel McLaughlin. Jaleel, your first NFL game, you scored a touchdown. What does that mean to you? Uh, it means a lot. It's definitely something that you work, you know, you work hard for as a kid. And, and now I'm just happy, you know, that at that moment I was able to be able to do something like that to help the team. Um, it was it was unbelievable. Yeah. How did it feel to put on that jersey and walk out to an NFL stadium for the first time? <sighs> It's a blessing. It's truly a blessing, you know, because you have um, – it's something you work hard for. You know, I, I worked hard for that, and um, now I'm finally able to do that. I'm just going to continue to keep working hard so I'm able to keep putting it on. You know, it's preseason, so regardless of the score, you know, how important was it to get out there and make the most out of this opportunity for you? I felt like, you know, it was it was great because um, that's what life is about. You know, how what are you going to do with your opportunities when you get those opportunities? Um, and, you know, I try to do whatever I can to make the most of it. So um, I'm definitely thankful, um, and it's a blessing. Yeah. Jaleel, overall, how do you feel? You know, we're a few weeks into training camp now. What do you like about your game, and where do you want it to be by the start of the season? Um, really, I'm just – 
learning learning from the the vets, you know, learning from Samaje, Javante, uh, even Tyler, Tony, Mike Burton, those guys, you know, any question that I have, those guys answer, um, you know, and it's great to have, be around a, a great group like that of brothers, you know, mm -hmm. since I've gotten here to training camp, they, those, those are my brothers. So um, it's been good to learn from them and I'm going to take everything I can from them and um, just keep working hard. I love it. Julie, I appreciate your time. Congratulations on your first game and first touchdown. Thank you. Hey, Phil, Julie, I'll send it back to you. Thank you very much, Cindy. Uh, let's talk about the defensive side of the ball a little bit. Uh, this defense played okay, and then they give up that final touchdown drive. Yeah, but again, those were uh, second and third down players in there, uh, thir second and third team players. Uh, but still, they have to go out there and produce as well. Uh, with first team, you and I thought Alex Singleton did a great job of flying around, as he always does, uh, put some pressure on the quarterback, I think, to help uh, get that interception for Essang Bassi. Uh, Essang Bassi did a great job of looking it in and uh, getting a nice, uh, nice, nice return on it as well. Uh, several guys – they did well. They, they played together, and they played hard. And fortunately, not too many injuries. Yeah, DJ Jones left this game with a concussion. Josie Jewell left the game a little bit early. And then Nick Benito, we're going to have to find out a little bit yeah, more. Yeah, hopefully that's not serious. Maybe a hip injury. But uh, Nick, what do you think about Well, be, but you mentioned uh, Nick Benito. Before he left with the injury, I thought he was giving some good bursts off the line. And this is another guy who needs to turn the corner. When the team goes out and get your college – edge rushing coach and bring him in, you better start to show some kind of benefit. But, yeah, I, I'm, I'm eager to see how he bounces back. We don't, still don't know what the level of his injury is. But before he left out, I mean, he showed a lot of promise. And that's a guy that definitely needs to step up. Known as though you got Frank Clark and Randy Gregory in the fold. So he's going to be needed this season. And Frank Clark did not play uh, tonight either. But, uh, yeah, I, I agree. Nick Benito has been playing well in practice. Took it out to the game as well tonight. Uh, let's go back out to – State Farm Stadium one more time and check in with Sidney Jones. Thanks, Phil. We're here inside the locker room with wide receiver Jerry Judy. Jerry, slow start for the you know starting offense tonight, but you know you capped off your outing with that 21-yard touchdown. Overall, what did you just think about the starting offense's performance? I mean, I feel like collectively as a group, we didn't start off how we wanted to. You know, we didn't start off fast, but you know. Uh, we finished with a, a touchdown, so that's a good thing. But, you know, as a group, I don't think we like how we start off because we didn't start off in a, getting in the end zone. So, yeah. Do you feel like you guys are on the right track, though? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, you know, we, we strive to be perfect. But, you know, this is the first game of the season and playing it, especially in this environment, you know, preseason and everything. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff that we could do better on and just get better on, focus on tomorrow and see, watch the film and see what we need to do better. For you, though, Jerry, did it feel like you were able to kick the dust off a bit? Feel good to be back out there? Yeah, it's always feel good to be playing football, especially against other opponents and other teams. So, you know, it, it's good to be out there making plays and, um, and, and doing what I love to do. What did you think about some of the other young receivers, you know, the guys who are trying to uh, earn a spot on this roster? Uh, yeah, watching those guys, you know, it's always, I always enjoy watching them guys play. You know, they did a great job today. When the ball came their way, they made plays. So, you know, that's always exciting. Anyone stand out to you in particular? Um, you know, there, there, there's a lot of great guys. You know, you got great running backs, great receivers. Um, you know, the defense had great guys that I love watching play. You know, so it, it, we got people all around that I enjoy watching. Well, Jerry, appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Phil, I'll send it back to you. Thank you very much, Sydney. Uh, time to wrap up the show a little bit here. Uh, any concerns for you guys uh, moving forward? Uh, camp wrapping up uh, this week, and then uh, they got two more preseason games to go. Yeah, well, uh, I think they obviously still have some things to work on as a team uh, and be anxious to see how serious the injuries were. Hopefully they're not very serious at all. It didn't look like any, there was anything major. No one got carted off or anything like that. So uh, hopefully that, that, that's a good thing. And, hey, we just got to keep grinding, keep, keep putting in the work. Uh, you made some progress from uh, training camp and, and, and the, start of the, the start of the training camp, and you can get a chance to see where you are right now and we just want, just want to make sure after the next preseason game, we've gotten a couple Keep of steps better. Games, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's the idea, just kind of try to get better week in and week out. You can't really do anything about these injuries, but what it does is forces those guys who are battling for those roster spots to kind of step up to the plate and really show that they belong on this team because, I mean, if you want to make the team, it's out there. You can't make it. You just have to seize the moment and, and kind of make the most of those opportunities. Obviously, you start some practice, then you carry over to the game, and you have a lot of those positive plays. So stacking decks, 
and continue to build on the process. And let's just see what happens at the end of the preseason. Uh, we'll be also paying attention to that kicking competition. We saw oh, a little bit of that man. today. Oh. <laughs> right now, look, they missed some, but they, those are some long kicks, though, too. Yeah, each of them were over, over 50 yards. Yeah. And, uh, but, hey, sometimes you're going to have to make those kind of kicks to help your team win, and your team's going to be counting on you. Uh, you'll be put in pressure situations, and you got to be able to respond. Uh, didn't respond this week. Guess what? Next week, next week is coming, the following week, and, and another one after that. So you got plenty of time to make up for it. See, you guys are being really nice about this. Not to say that we, you have to be really brutal about it, but I love your approach to it because I can tell you there are two people who are not happy about the kicking game right now. One is Mike Westoff and one is Sean Payton. Yeah. So hopefully both Marin and Fry can kind of – Figure out whatever the issues were and get back on track in the next two preseason games. We were talking about it watching the game. Sean Payne's brought up that story a bunch of times where uh, within New Orleans, they had a couple of kickers battling. Neither one of them made it. Yeah, so. they, they brought in somebody from another team. <laughs> exactly. so, they called uh, that motivation. Oh, boy. Yeah, that is motivation. He's a master motivator. So the Broncos will take uh, whatever they learn tonight and move forward. They got the 49ers coming up next Saturday. All right, that's going to do it for us. For Nick Ferguson and Steve Atwater, I am Phil Milani. The Broncos fall in the desert 18-17. to 17. This has been the Broncos Postgame Show.